Reggae Just Extra with Ras Dennis. This is Ras Dennis welcoming you to another episode of Reggae Just Extra. Yes, I am. On today's episode, we shall be looking at seven things most people probably didn't know about Jacob Miller. If today is your first time of watching our YouTube channel, kindly click on the subscribe button, like and hit the notification bell to keep you updated on our latest video. While pursuing a prolific solo career, Jacob Miller became the lead singer for reggae group Inner Circle with whom he recorded until his death in a car accident at the age of 27. Jacob Miller is one of reggae's greatest treasures. In addition to being one of reggae's most talented vocalists, he brought an unmatched energy and an excitement to reggae. His live performances are the stuff of legend. His fearless style of performing combined with his mighty opera style vocals earned him the nickname Killer since he killed all competitors in early talent shows and at local concerts and clubs. Miller was charismatic with an infectious personality and a true and unwavering love for life. So here are the eight things most people probably didn't know about Jacob Miller. 1. Unlike many of his contemporaries who hailed from the ghettos of West Kingston or the farmlands of rural Jamaica, Miller spent his childhood living with his grandparents in a middle-class home at 21A, Rousseau Road in Kingston. Born in Mandeville, New Green, Manchester, Miller was sent to live with his grandparents by his mother at a very young age. Miller is the first cousin of contemporary reggae singer, Maxi Priest. 2. At the young age of 13, Miller recorded his first song at Studio One for Clement Coxon Dodd in 1968. The song, titled Love is the Message, went largely unnoticed until Augustus Pablo started to spin it on his rocker's sound system. Miller recut the tune at Dynamic Studios in 1974 for Augustus Pablo, who released it under the title Keep on Knocking. In addition to being a gifted singer, Jacob Miller was also a supremely talented drummer who appeared on more than 500 songs cut in the early to mid-70s, including Hugh Mandel's Africa Must Be Free by 1983. Miller cut his first single with the Inner Circle Band in 1974, the Rasta-influenced forward Ja Ja Children which was issued as a seven single on the Sweet City label. 3. Miller was the band's fourth lead singer preceded by Funky Brown, Milton Prilly Hamilton, and William Bunny Ruggs Clark. Inner Circle was actually formed in 1968 by brothers Ian and Roger Lewis with then 12-year-old Stephen Cat Corps and Michael Ebo Cooper. The band expanded in 1970 when they were joined by drummer William Stewart, percussionist Irving Carrot Jarrett, and the band's original singer William Bunny Ruggs Clark. The group split in 1973 with Hamilton, Core, Stewart, and Cooper going on to form Third World and the Lewis Brothers, along with new recruits Charles Farquharson and Bernard Towder Harvey on keys and Calvin McKenzie on drums, forging a new Inner Circle. Inner Circle's first album, Dread Reggae Hits, was released in 1973 on Ian Lewis's top-ranking label. Inner Circle's first two albums for major label Capitol Records, Reggae Thing, 1976, and Ready for the World, 1977, were comprised primarily of earlier Jacob Miller's solo material. Both albums were flops and Capitol subsequently dropped the group. 4. Miller spent a lot of time in New York City, often shacking up at the Essex House Hotel on Central Park South, a popular destination for island-signed artists including Bob Marley. He could also be found strolling the streets of the Bronx where his mother relocated to from Jamaica in the early 1970s. These trips to NYC did not bode well for Miller's evolving interest in Rastafari. As he explains in a 1979 interview which appeared in the New Musical Express, every time I went to New York, my old lady would make me trim my locks. 5. Jacob Miller's favorite phrase was, everything is great. He was known to use it almost compulsively, sometimes repeating it several times in the same short conversation. In fact, he loved the phrase so much that it ended up being the title of the group's 1979 debut for Island Records. The title track became a top 20 hit in the UK and a top 10 smash in France, and the album produced the popular singles Mary, Mary and Music Machine. 
6. Miller's life was transformed when he met dub reggae maestro and devoted Rastafarian Augustus Pablo, who ironically was also a member of the Inner Circle Band earlier in his career. Miller was one of several youths, including Hugh Mandel and Junior Reed, Pablo took under his wing, introducing them to Rastafari and music. It is the Pablo produced Baby I Love You So and its version titled King Tubby Meets Rockers Uptown that have become Miller's signature and most enduring singles. The song was released as a 45 RPM single in 1974 on the Mango label, MS 2001, with King Tubby Meets Rockers Uptown as the A side. With Pablo Miller also recorded singles such as Each One Teach One, Keep On Knocking, False Rasta, and Who Say Ja No Dread. 7. On his way to becoming an international reggae superstar after a brilliant performance in the 1978 film Rockers and a legendary performance at the One Love Peace concert on April 22, 1978, Miller, 25, was killed in a tragic car accident on March 23, 1980. The car crash also took the lives of two children, one of them Jacob's son. Miller's funeral was held one week later on March 30, 1980 at the National Arena in Kingston. The funeral featured notable speakers Dudley Thompson, National Security Minister, and Archbishop Yishak of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, who conducted the service and eulogized Miller. The service also featured playing and chanting by Cedric Brooks and the Light of Saba. Jacob Miller was laid to rest later that day at Dovecot Memorial Park, the same place that fellow rockers musician Hugh Mandel is interred three short years later. Thanks for watching and kindly leave your thoughts in the comment section down below and I'll see you again very soon for another video. However, until we meet again, please subscribe, like and hit the notification bell to keep you updated on our latest video. Much effort is made to ensure all materials and reggae gist extras videos fall within the guidelines of fair use. No copyright infringement is intended. If you are or represent the copyright owner of any materials accidentally used in this video and have an issue with its use, please contact me, Ras Dennis, and I will respond as soon as possible. Many thanks for watching Reggae Gist Extra with Ras Dennis.